<clears throat> okay, what's up guys? I've got the CyberPower GUA 880 right here, and um, this is going to be a small tutorial on how to upgrade the power supply. I just recently did a video about how bad the power supply is on this computer, and how if you get it, you should replace it right away. Like, you can turn it on and use it for a little bit, but I'd recommend replacing it before you even turn it on. So, if that's the case, you don't have to worry about this, but I'm just going to quick show you how to make it safe to work on if you have turned it on. So make sure everything is unplugged here from the back I.O. shield, and um, down here you can just unplug this, and then make sure that this is switched to O, which is a closed circuit, and then press the power button and hold it in for like a second. You saw the lights turned on for a minute there, and like a second there. And that's just all the excess power coming out of the components themselves. So now that it's safe to work on, we will start. Okay, so you're just going to want to start by taking off the side panel. It's got removable thumb screws on the back. Very easy to undo. And then you can slide it right off. And then so here's your power supply right here. So the first thing you're going to need to do is screw it out. So I'll get you guys a better angle at that. Okay, so we got four screws back here that come with it. Just take all these out. So once you got all of those out, you can see that the power supply is loose. I can just push it. So this part really depends on how you want to do it. I like to keep it ticked up how it is. But a lot of times people put it this way so that it's easier. But first thing I usually do is pull this out right up here. This is the 12 volt for the CPU. So there's a little piece that you want to push in and then you just pull it right out just like that. Next big thing is the 24 pin on the motherboard. There's a little clip on the side. Push that in and pull. You really have to pull for this one but just give it a lot of strength and pull it out and you can do it. And then next one's... Um, Let's pull this down through the graphics card. You might want to remove the graphics card in order to do this. But you can make it work without doing that. Just try and be careful not to scratch the motherboard or anything if you're going to do it that way. So, next thing, once you get all these cables out of the way, is um, I have all these up here you're probably not going to but just see what else you have plugged in really I have the hard drive plugged in so I'll pull that out and then I have a Molex plugged into the fan back here so I'll pull that out too and that is it the power supply is out so um, you can take this one out this is actually my good one I didn't really have the old one I didn't want to put it back in there and then take that one out and put this one again because that's a lot of work so I'm just going to take this one out and put this one back in, so, um, yeah, I'll put it back in now. Okay, so, now that we're going to be putting it back in, basically there are two things that you have to think about before you even start. This fan right here is going to pull air in and push it out this vent, so, if you have it on a hard surface, which you really should, I wouldn't recommend putting it on carpet, but, if you have it on a hard surface, it's usually better to have the fan pulling air up and pushing it out the back. But if you do have it on carpet for some reason, then this is probably better. Pulling air in from the case and pushing it out the back. But basically your airflow in the case takes air from this, brings it up and pushes it out the back. So you don't really want it pulling down and coming two ways. So it's really better having the fan facing down. With that said, we will just put it in like usual. Make sure all of your cables are out of the way. And just get it in. Make sure you line these up, and then you can screw that in, but before I, actually yeah, I should screw that in first, so I'll screw in just two of these real quick, but make sure you do all four by the end of it. I only need two now, because this is just to hold it in place. And then once you've got that screwed in, um, just pull out these back thumb screws. You're definitely going to have to do some cable management with this, because you can't just expect to get decent temperatures if you have cables all over the place. But pull the back off and then just basically start connecting stuff. I usually try and get it as organized as possible, so I connect this one first. With this case, there's not really anywhere you can go with it to hide it. I mean, you kind of just have to go straight up. So make sure that this little pin is facing towards the outside of the board. 
You can also use the connectors to make sure that those are oriented correctly. Um, this 4 comes off because some motherboards only use 20 pins, so if that came off, just make sure that you have it on and it's on tight. Just like that. And then you can plug that right back in. Make sure that that's in totally tight. You won't necessarily hear a click, but just look at them all, make sure all the pins are in all the way, and you should be good. So next thing I like to do is the ATX 12 volts, which are power for your processor. These ones, um, you can kind of, you can put them up through your graphics card, which is where I had them before, but yeah, I would recommend putting them up through your graphics card, because again, this case doesn't have the best cable management. So I would do that, but just for the sake of this video, I don't feel like doing that because it'll take some time. So I'm just going to bring them up like this, and I will plug it in. Just that simple. It'll be in tight. That one's not very hard. You don't really have to force it like you do with this one. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. But yeah, usually I would put that behind the graphics card. It's always going to have a slot for that cable. So um, next, we have a 6-pin for your graphics card. But if you kept the default graphics card, you won't be needing that. So I'll put that aside. And so just try and get these sorted out, like I said, they're really kind of messy. I like a modular power supply, so you don't have all of these, but you're going to need one Molex for your fan if you kept it default, which is what most of you probably did. So your fan back here comes with this, which is an adapter from the three pin, which you would usually connect to your motherboard. It's an adapter from that to a Molex, so just plug any Molex in just like this. Which way is it? Just like that. And that will power your front fan. That didn't feel like it went in all the way. I'm going to use a different one. Make sure. This one should click. Yeah, see that will go in all the way just like that. And that's going to power your front fan to take air in. So I'll just leave those at the back for now. And then you will have a DVD drive up here. I took it out. That's going to need one of these SATA connectors and then another blue one like this that will already be hooked up to it. So, um, yeah, you probably didn't unplug that blue one earlier when you took the power supply out, but just take this, plug it in right up there to your DVD drive, and then take another one like this and plug it into your... Sorry guys, my camera overheated, but anyways, yeah, you're going to plug that one in up there. And then you're going to plug one down here into your hard drive, a SATA cable, which I actually already did. I'll unplug that, so um, I just took one of these. There's two different kinds of powers, basically. There's this, which is the 4-pin, that's a Molex, and this is the SATA power. It's wider than a SATA data connector, but um, both of these are for power. This is mainly for hard drives and SSDs, and anything that uses SATA, really, and this Molex is for anything else, like fans, and I really don't know what else, but yeah, Molex is basically old. Nobody really uses that, but take one of these SATAs and um, put it down here into your hard drive. So, let's see if I can just get this under here and get it plugged in. Sometimes it's easier to go from the back of the case for this, but I'm going to try and just do it. So, just get it lined up right, push it in. You don't have to be too careful about that. It's not like it's going to break or anything, but... Yeah, that's, that's basically it. You've got that SATA powering your hard drive. You've got a Molex up here powering your DVD drive. 24 pin powering your motherboard. 4 pin powering your CPU. And if you need it, this 6 pin powering your graphics card. But with the GT610 and actually a lot of graphics cards, you don't need the extra 6 pin. So just do what you can with these cables. Some people leave them down here, which is okay. I personally like to put them up here. And then, whichever ones don't want to fit up there, I leave them down here. So, I'll try and just get these routed somewhere. And well, that one's not going, so I'll put this right there in the side. I have these ones back here hooked up to my fan, just kind of sitting behind the case. And that's basically it. Do whatever cable management you can, and then just put your side panels back on. Once you have that done, find the power connector for the back of your power supply, which is actually not plugged into the wall, oops. So find the power connector for the back of your power supply, get everything hooked back up, so 
plug this in down here, plug your monitor back in, whatever other stuff you have. Flip this back to the eye, which is an open circuit, and turn your computer on. Oops, yeah, you don't really need that. And turn your computer on with the new power supply. And there you go. So now you know how to switch up the power supply on the CyberPower GUA880. I hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.